This problem or paradox highlights the difficulty understanding the nature of the wave function collapse in quantum mechanics. We have spherical waves functions that collapse into linear tracks that are visible in cloud chambers or bubble chambers of particle accelerators. In this theory, the wave function or probability function forms part of a universal process that we see and feel as the flow of time, forming the linear flow of time within each individual reference frame. The linear tracks formed by a particle accelerator are no different than the light rays that we see at daybreak or sunset. Rays of sunlight are one of the most beautiful forms that light can take, but could they also help us understand the paradoxes of quantum mechanics? In quantum mechanics we have the wave-particle duality of light. Light is a wave and a particle at the same time. But when we look at rays of sunlight we can see that light waves are relative to the clouds and the particles in the atmosphere, and the rays of light are formed by a process over a period of time. The waves of sunlight will break through the clouds and constructive and destructive interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out, forming rays of sunlight. Richard Feynman said that no one has ever been able to define the difference between interference and diffraction. He said it is just a question of usage and there is no specific important physical difference between them. He suggested that when there are only a few sources, say two, we call it interference, as in the two-slit experiment, but with a large number of sources the process can be labelled as diffraction. Therefore we can see rays of sunlight as nature's way of producing the interference pattern that we create in the two-slit experiment. In the two-slit experiment, when light waves reach the screen with the two slits, the waves of light that come in contact with the screen will collapse into new photons that will have a position in space and time. The waves that don't come in contact with the screen will go through both slits and constructive and destructive interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When the waves come in contact with the screen they will collapse creating moments in time and quantum particles in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern collapses. This is because to observe a photon we have to create a photon-electron coupling collapsing each wave front into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time. When we turn the detector off we remove the photon-electron coupling and in time the interference pattern will reform. Within the reference frame of the experiment this process represents the flow or continuum of time itself as a process of continuous energy exchange or continuous creation. Put very simply the light emitted by an atom now is going to be absorbed by another atom later on and we measure this fundamental process of continuous change as the flow of time itself. In this theory quantum mechanics represents the physics of time as a physical process. The quantum of quantum mechanics is a unit of energy that we see and feel as the flow of time itself. Time is continuously being formed photon by photon by the spontaneous absorption and emission of light waves of electromagnetic radiation a process of continuous change, continuous energy exchange, forming the future uncertainty of everyday life. This uncertainty can be seen mathematically as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle of quantum physics. This might sound mad, but the probability function that forms the uncertainty principle also forms the movement of electric charge, forming the flow of electric current with electrical potential. In this theory, electrical potential and the individual's future potential are the same within their own reference frame. The most advanced part of this universal process is in the form of electrical activity 
in the brain being able to comprehend and measure this process as the flow of time with a past and uncertain future. This process is totally universal and interactive from the largest object to the smallest creature right down to the smallest element of the periodic table will slow the rate that time flows forming a curvature of space-time relative to its own energy or mass. If our eyes were more sensitive to the different wavelengths of light we would be able to see that everything is radiating electromagnetic light waves continuously. This forms a great dance of energy exchange forming a process of spontaneous and continuous change that we see and feel as the aging process and as the flow of time itself. The second law of thermodynamics falls out of this theory, the organization for the spontaneous disorganization of entropy is formed by the spherical symmetry of the quantum wave particle function. The spontaneous absorption and emission of light forms the flow of time with photon energy cascading down forming greater degrees of freedom for the flow of entropy. We have an infinite number of reference frames within our universe and because light has momentum and momentum is frame dependent each object or observer will have their own reference frame with their own future uncertainty as time unfolds photon by photon therefore an observer can look back in time at the beauty of the stars in all directions from the center of their own reference frame this is because they are forming their own space-time by collapsing the waves of light into new photon oscillations forming their own future potential. This can be explained in just one equation. Energy equals mass linked to the Lorentz contraction of space and time. Therefore the greater the energy the greater the contraction of space and the slower time will run. Mass will increase relative to this and each reference frame can be seen as a vortex in space and time. Light radiating out in all directions at a constant speed forming a sphere of electromagnetic radiation from its radius forming a square of probability. Objects just free fall towards the center of the sphere because it has the slowest rate that time flows and therefore the greatest energy or mass. Note how this process works in the three dimensions of our everyday life unlike the diagrams of gravity in the form of a trampoline that are just two-dimensional. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. Because atoms consist mostly of empty space, electromagnetic radiation of short wavelengths like X-rays can penetrate the objects and therefore every single part of matter can take part in the gravitational interaction. The gravitational field will propagate at the same speed that electromagnetic radiation moves, the speed of light, therefore there is no instantaneous action at a distance. This can explain the great similarities between the equations of the electromagnetic force and the gravitational force. It is because the electrical potential and the gravitational potential are both linked to one universal process that is continuously unfolding at the quantum level of the atoms. An artist will take energy and time to create a work of art because the atoms of the hand and eye have bonded together forming the movement of electric charge creating their own potential future. Creation is truly in the hand and eye of the beholder in this theory.